Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am finally here with a Q&A video for you guys. I have quite a bit of questions, so we're just gonna go ahead and dive right into it. Just gonna start with the deep questions. How do you and your husband handle the challenges of being a biracial couple? I don't know if Trevor goes through as much as I do. If he does, he's never really said anything about it, but he knows that I get quite a few messages and comments from people when it comes to me being married to a white man. I get it from both sides and by both sides I mean I get hateful spiteful messages from white people and black people about how they just view it morally wrong and against God that I should be married to a white man. There are times when we have gone out, Trevor has seen it too, where we will get stared at in some not so nice ways. It doesn't happen as often as it used to, but it does still happen. That I was kind of already used to growing up with two white parents. Every time we went out, we would get looked at and stared at. And so that was something that I was already used to. I dealt with my fair share of bullying when it came to my hair and skin tone and being raised by two white parents. I didn't really date white men often. Um, I think there were like two before Trevor. So I knew kind of going into it, that I was getting myself into. I don't really think that he knew per se. Like I said, if he's ever gotten comments or messages like that, he's never really said much to me, probably best. It's probably best that I don't know. I received the messages. Sometimes I would ignore it. Other times I would lash out and other times I would just make like a smart ass comment because I think it's freaking stupid that people are wasting their time being so upset with who I'm married to as if it affects them. We'll say though, outside of all that, it doesn't really bother me. I think the one time that I was really upset actually is when Jess had my son and the amount of comments and questions I got about me being his nanny instead of his mother. It's funny because a lot of you have recognized a specific person on my channel. I think her comments got reported or something. They're not there anymore and she hasn't commented in a few days. So I'm thinking she either moved on with her life or maybe YouTube banned her. But there was a specific person on my channel that was making it a point to comment on every video and post about the skin color of my children. Her telling me that the black community does not claim me because I married a white man instead of a black man and had white kids instead of black kids. I mean, it sucks that we're still dealing with that in 2021. First time I ever got questioned about being Kale's nanny instead of his mom really pissed me off. One, I nearly died carrying that child, literally nearly died. Two, I was actually a nanny at the time and never in my years of nannying had I ever been questioned about being those kids nanny, they were full white. But the minute I had my son and we would be at the store, at the park, People would be like, oh, how long have you been his nanny? You're his mother? Oh, you can't possibly be his mother. Just didn't put the two together because of your skin tone. People really feel like my kids should look a certain way because of how I look and they can't really understand genetics or science at all in general. The first comment I got is, I think, what really sent me over the edge. I remember lashing out. I remember crying. I was so incredibly offended because that was my baby. And there were people really out here that I'm, I'm getting emotional. There were people really out here thinking that I could not possibly have a child that looks like that. To answer this question, because maybe I've kind of veered off a bit, we just deal with it. We either ignore it, we laugh at it, or I get violent lady commenting on my channel about my kids. I really didn't say anything to her until after a while because there were a few people that were coming in and defending my children and I felt like I needed to say something. I didn't want other people speaking up for my kids. I really appreciated it but I felt like I needed to officially say something and then she started making fun of my kids' names and things like that. But most of the time, when it comes from the internet, I try not to let it get to me because most of the time, like 95% of the time, those people would not have the balls to say it to my face. Yes, there have been people asking me if I was my kid's nanny instead of their mom, but as far as like full blown hate, that comes very few and far in between in person, face to face. It's mostly just internet hate. So I try not to let it get the best of me knowing that they probably would not say it to my face because they would get smacked the up. 
moving on from that, how long have you and Trevor been together and how did you meet? So we met our freshman year in college, I think like a month or two into freshman year, we wasted no time. And we have been together since then, so almost 11 years. There were a few years in that 11 years where we were on and off, they were our ugly years. We did some work before we could come back together and really be together as a family. We had Kale at the time, get married, and bloom into what we are now. I was headed with some friends to go out to eat one late night and we were driving past some dorms. He was outside on the phone. I, for some reason, made a flirtatious comment towards him. I don't know what came over me. I'm just gonna be honest, he was not my type like at all, not normally what I went for. I really don't understand what came over me to want to flirt with him, but he texted one of the friends I was in the car with that night after we drove off saying something flirtatious back to be said to me. And we just kind of like hit it off from there. I knew after our first night together that he was going to be the man I married. We went to a party and then we didn't want the night to end basically. And so he went to his dorm room, got us a bunch of blankets, brought me some pajamas. We went through a parking lot in the college campus and we found this random truck, don't know who it belonged to, we got in the bed of the truck, laid down the blankets, and we literally spent the entire night talking, looking up at the stars, and just like saying whatever came to mind. Didn't kiss, and I was so surprised because I for sure thought he was going to kiss me because we're under the stars, like that was the perfect time. But we didn't do anything, and we got up, it was sunny outside, and I was like, we should probably get out of this person's truck before they come and try to drive it, see random people in here and call the cops on us. So after that, I went back to my dorm that morning, and I was like, that's my husband. That's the man I'm going to marry. And now here we are, almost 11 years later. How old was I when I had my children? So I got pregnant with Kale at 19, and had him when I was 20, and then I had Navy nine months ago. Yes, our kids are very far apart. We did try to have kids uh, closer. We got married when Kale was three, I believe. And I wanted my kids to be closer in age. I wanted a lot of kids, but that just wasn't in the cards for us. I had two very difficult pregnancies. Like I said earlier, I nearly died with Kale. Navy and I's life was at risk when I was pregnant with her as well. Pregnancies were not easy, they were not pretty, and I struggled. And so for the people asking me, do we plan on having more kids? I don't think we do. Because of my age and how I experienced both of those pregnancies, I don't think it's smart for us to try for a third. Now, if something happens, God willing, then you know we'll run with it. But as far as like trying for a third child, I don't think it's smart. How old are you? I am 29. <laughs> I'll be 30 in February. Trevor just turned 29 July 30th, so I'm a little bit older than him by a few months. I can't believe I'm almost 30. How do I cope with missing my husband while he is away? So if you don't know, if you're for some reason new here, my husband is in the Navy. Right now is in Pensacola, Florida. He will be moved to Virginia soon for like the next eight months. And then we are all moving to Japan, I believe March of 2022. I think I have so much going on here that it's hard for me to just focus on missing my husband. I think it hits me the most at night when it's quiet and all the kids are asleep and I'm by myself and I look over on the side of the bed and he's not there and I try to imagine him being there and like wrapping me up in his arms I have his clothes on like I'm spraying his cologne like I'm just trying to find some closeness with him I think like during the day as much as I miss him I just have so much going on that I can't really like be sad a few months of this year when we had no contact with each other that was harder now we at least can like FaceTime, we text throughout the day. Like, so right now it's it's fine. He's just not here physically, but I see him and talk to him constantly. Beginning, we had no sort of communication. And I think the part that hit me the most was when like a week after Trevor left, Hale was diagnosed with type one diabetes and I was in the hospital. I had just had Navy and I hadn't been without her that long until that moment. She couldn't be in the hospital with me. So she was at home 
here with my parents and I was in the hospital with Kale. Like my anxiety was through the roof being without the baby. Seeing Kale going through so many needles and so many doctors and just like all of it hitting me at once and I could not talk to my husband. Why am I, I'm getting so emotional this Q&A already. I couldn't just talk to him. I was in the hallway and I was like trying to remain strong and calm, but my son was screaming, asking the doctors to like stop touching him because he was just over it. I mean, it was so many needles. It had all happened so fast that I didn't have time to like even process it all, but I just had so many like emotions and that was the time that I missed him the most and I did not handle it well. If I'm being quite honest, when I got home, I like threw stuff. I screamed, I cried. Outside of that moment and some other particular instances where I'm just at my breaking point and I need to just punch a pillow or scream into a pillow or whatever, I think I just remain busy as much as I possibly can so I can't think about the fact that I'm doing this all by myself. Sometimes Kale can pick up when I'm not doing well faster than I can. He will say to me, do you need to go to your closet and cry? And a lot of times he'll be like, yes, yes I do. He knows that I have a space in my closet where I go to collect myself, gain a like healthier mindset than where I'm at right now. I go there, I cry, I say whatever I need to say, like whatever it is, I literally just talk inside my closet. And I've done that for years. Like in our other homes, we had two closets. And so one of those closets would like be dedicated to a place where I could go and pray, say what I need to say, cry, whatever I needed to do, that closet was like my safe space. And I feel like it's important to create a safe space for yourself within your home, apartment, whatever, just where you can let go and let it be whatever it needs to be. Deal with it in that space and then come back out, you know, deal with the world. My tattoo, how is my relationship with God today? So a lot of you lately actually, more than usual have noticed my tattoo on my wrist. As far as my relationship with God today, I won't say that it's perfect. I will say it's not as good as it used to be. I'm not really a religious person. I don't even think I could claim myself really as a Christian just because of how I handle things and how I see things is far off from other Christians. There's a lot of things that I don't agree with. Not all, but there's a vast majority of religious people that treat people in a way that I don't see fit and they use God's word to justify that and I just can't do that. So as far as like my relationship with God, it's personal and true, it's raw of talking to God. I do it all the time, especially when I was working and I had to drive an hour to work and back. I would sometimes just sit in the car that entire way and I would just talk, 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 talk. And that was me talking to God. When I go to my space in my closet, I talk to him. I tell him what's going on. Sometimes I'm really mad at him and I'll say, you know, whatever I want to say. But to me, there's like an understanding and there's a relationship. And it's like I said, it's raw. It's true. And I love God, I believe in him. That's kind of my stance on that. And I do believe personally for me that God has got me through some of the toughest times because I know where I was in my life when I didn't believe in him. If you don't believe in God, I respect you fully and I don't love you any less. Is it hard to do self-care as a mom? How do you manage your time so you can take care of yourself? It is absolutely hard as hell to do self-care as a mom, okay? And don't let anybody tell you different. If you're a stay-at-home mom, it is just as hard as if you're a working mom, okay? We are busy no matter what. And we as moms, for some reason, cannot win in society because it's never freaking enough. But let me tell you something I learned. I refuse, refuse, <laughs> Nangi's playing with her brother. I refuse to put myself last anymore. I did that four years and I can't do that anymore. Your family is not 100% good if you are not 100% good. You have to take care of yourself. You have to make yourself a priority. You have to care about yourself. You have to love yourself. You need to step away and take time for yourself. Your kids will be okay. Your significant other will be okay. Please, 
please do not put yourself last anymore. If you're watching this and you're thinking to myself, I never do anything for myself. I always put my kids and my partner first. I'm not saying stop taking care of your family because I think that you should. But I also think that you need to put yourself first because when you're good, they're good. When you're not good, they're not good because you are the heart of the home. You are the nurturer of the home. You are the caretaker of the home. You need to be good. So find it in yourself. It took me a minute also, every time that the kids would nap, I would feel like this, I gotta get this and this and this and this and this and this and this done while they're napping. And it took me a while to be like, okay, you know, it's okay if something doesn't get cleaned right away. It's okay if I don't run this errand right away. It's okay if I don't check all the boxes off my to-do list. The kids are napping. Let me just lay on the bed and enjoy the silence. Are you happy and satisfied with where you are in life? Yes and no. I am happy about my life. I'm happy about the life that I created with my husband and our two kids. I have pretty much everything that I've asked for in life and I'm not saying that to brag I'm just saying I feel like I prayed for it hard and I worked hard for it and for that I'm happy as far as satisfied goes no and I don't know if that's a good or bad thing but we have this now I want to aim for this I'm a very goal and dream driven person so I'm always like envisioning like where can we go what can we do what can we experience I want to accomplish those things for my family, for myself, my kids mainly. I like, I want to give them everything. So I'm happy. I'm like truly and genuinely happy, but I want to give my family the world. What was my inspiration for my kids' names? Kale is spelled K-A-L-E, Navy is spelled N-A-Y-V-I-E. Kale, before I was even pregnant with him, I watched the movie Disturbia. Maybe you guys have seen it with Shia LaBeouf. His name was Kale. And I remember when I first heard that name in that movie and I was like, I really, really love that name. So I swore that if I ever had a child and he was a boy, his name would be Kale. And Trevor knew that going in to our relationship. I don't know why I told him that, but I did. So when we ended up pregnant and told that we were having a boy, I was like, well, I already know his name. And that was settled. There was no discussion about it. That was gonna be his name. I had already claimed it and it was meant to be. As far as Navy goes, we always said that we would name our daughter Nani. And when I got pregnant again and knew from day one after that, that it was definitely a girl because the pregnancy was a million times different than what it was with Kale. We were like just checking up on different girl names because all of a sudden I really wasn't sold on the name we had picked. I feel like it's, it's not right. I don't feel like this is a name for her. And then I had a dream one night or like a vision. I have a lot of visions say that I mean like I see things sometimes and they actually like come to life. So I had this vision one night and it was both of our kids and our daughter before we even knew that we were having a girl. She was a little bit older, probably like three or four. And we were outside somewhere and I yelled Navy and she turned around and looked at me. I remember like waking up and saying, I know what our daughter's name is. <laughs> and I was like, Navy is her name. My husband hated the name, was not for the name whatsoever. So we found some other names. The other name that we really liked was Imran Cove, Imran, E-M-R-Y-N. I loved the name Imran Cove, I picked it out and he actually really liked the name as well. <laughs> But as much as I love the name, I was like, this just isn't our daughter's name. It, it's not what I saw. And I kept trying to move on from it because I know he didn't love the name Navy. And I was like, I'm telling you, this is her name. Have our daughter's name be Imran Navy so that we can have both. And I was like, that's not going to work. And I really wasn't trying to be stubborn about it. I just like, I couldn't take what I saw and try to change it. I don't know how else to explain it. And I was like, I need you to just trust me. Our daughter's name is Navy. Do you suffer postpartum depression and what do you do to get through it? Yes, I do have postpartum depression. Um, I've always had pretty much anxiety. I will say that I probably had depression before, but it's definitely been heightened drastically after my kids. Uh, the first time around, I didn't really tell anybody about it and I suffered greatly by myself. This time around with Navy, I was like, okay, no. I'm not doing this by myself. I'm going to make it known. I'm going to make 
it normal to talk about and be open about it because I'm going to get through this with help and I'm not going to be ashamed of it. Now someone has told me that I shouldn't have had kids if I wasn't okay because I can't properly take care of my kids but I do the best that I can every single day and I fight for my mindset every single day for my children and do talk to somebody. I think that therapy is huge and I don't think it's something that you should get away from because I feel like therapy sometimes has like a negative connotation about it and it's definitely not a negative thing. You can go to therapy for literally anything and I think it's a godsend, honestly. I do talk to someone that you can take medication for it. I highly recommend therapy. Habits for self-care and self-love. Um, take yourself out on dates. Make yourself a priority. Find yourself your space. Like I said earlier, another thing I'm doing, um, I'm actually reading this book with Trevor. Trevor got us both a copy of this book so that we could read it together. It's You Are Not Alone by Zachary David Westerbeck. It says the only book you'll ever need to overcome anxiety and depression. I would like to say, cause I know that most of you know when I had a, like a really dark episode like a month ago, I want it to be known that I'm doing much much better. I feel like I'm starting to kind of get ahead of it and getting back to my normal self slowly, but I'm getting there. I've, I feel like I'm eating better. I'm sleeping better. I'm communicating better. And I feel like being really open and honest about how I'm doing has made a huge difference in that. Yes, I do have that issue. Don't ever tell me I'm a bad mother because of it or that I can't take care of my children because of it because that's absolute horseshit. If you are suffering from postpartum depression or anxiety or just depression and anxiety in general, please don't ever let anyone make you feel like you are less than what you truly are because you're amazing. You have a purpose. You are important. You are loved. And anybody who has different to say can literally shove it up their asshole. Let's do some like more lighthearted questions. I feel like it's been super dark and depressing and I am like very sorry. I was trying to get through like the deep stuff first but now I just feel like this video is kind of sad. Okay, how tall are you? I am 5'5 five, five on a good day but mostly 5'4. Favorite foods? Spaghetti. Hands down and Chinese are something that I could eat every single day and have no regrets. My favorite color? is teal. Favorite hobby? Reading and taking myself out on dates, which I, I don't know if that's really a hobby taking myself out, but if it could be considered one, I'd like that to be my favorite hobby. But I really, really enjoy reading. Favorite body spray? Hands down the Forever Red from Bath and Body Works because it's a deep, luxurious, rich scent. It's very potent. I feel like some Bath and Body Works sprays aren't really as strong in scent and don't last very long. I feel like Forever Red nails both of those things. I think it's perfect for all year round. It's just so, it's such a sexy scent to me and I love it. Favorite body wash brand to use and why? Probably, hmm, I was gonna say Dove, but honestly, I only use a couple things of Dove. Lately, I've really been loving Olay and the OGX brand. Die Hard Body Wash, it'd probably be like the Dove Deep Moisture because I just feel like it's a scent that you can never go wrong with because it's such a clean, basic scent. It is moisturizing. Um, I love the way it lathers up, but as far as like scents go, y'all know my favorite one is that Degree Cherry, but that's the only scent from the Degree Body Wash that I love. I have a lot of body washes from OGX that I absolutely adore as far as smell and feeling goes and same with Olay. So I feel like probably Olay would be my top body wash brand. Where hygiene scent it really depends on the season because I shop based off season. For summer, I really like fruity tropical cocktail smells. For fall and winter, I really love deep, rich, warm, comforting type of scents. And for spring, I love floral, a little fruity, but mainly floral scents. So I love them all and I base them off of whatever season we're in. If you could create your own scent to sell, what would it be? Do I want to say this out loud? What if somebody steals my idea? 
I would love to create my own hygiene like brand one day. I think that would be really, really cool. But every fall and winter, I make it a deal with myself that I will make a new dessert every single week. It is my favorite time to bake and like practice. So I always look up new recipes of desserts that I can make for that week. And I feel like if I could make a dessert one week and we loved it, if I could create like a body wash and a scrub and a like lotion and mist off of that dessert that I made, that would be really cool. And I could name it like kind of after the desserts with like a cute little spin on it. I think that would just be so amazing. What inspired you to start a YouTube? So I had a channel before this one and it was based off mostly lifestyle and my fitness journey. A lot of people that followed me on social media back then followed me because of my like body transformation. I went from being super, super thin to getting pregnant and kind of letting myself go and being overweight to losing all of that weight and then realizing I didn't like being thin. It's not something that I enjoyed. Oh, I worked very hard for years to get strong and curvy and like that slim thick look and people really were inspired by that. What kind of inspired me was those people's comments and support. As I kind of like went through my channel, my vision kind of changed. I was still into fitness, but then I got pregnant and I couldn't work out. And I haven't really been into fitness as much. Um, I do hope to get back into that drive someday. I don't think my channel will ever be that again. Or not as a main focus, but just kind of like as a branch of my channel. The worst body products you have tried thus far. So Caress or Caress, whatever, I hate. I believe I'm allergic to the product, so I'm not self I hate it because I can't use it. It makes me like super, super itchy. But I also don't feel like they're the best smelling when it comes to body washes. I think the price is nice. But as far as like everlasting scent, I don't feel like Karis does the job well. I don't know how to say the freaking brand. So I apologize. The other brand I hate is Raw Sugar. Can't stand that brand. There's literally no smell to the product whatsoever. It made my skin super sticky, not moisturized. I hate everything about that brand as far as hygiene products go. Favorite store to shop from? Where do you spend most of your coin? Honestly, Amazon can take all my money. Items would you say you have in your collection? How long does a product last? Uh, I don't know how many. I'm looking at my carts right now. I think I have like 30 scrubs. Take 30 scrubs. I have a body spray to match those scrubs. I have a body wash to match those scrubs. I have a lotion probably and a deodorant to match those scrubs. The lotions and deodorants are not as much, but they're close because I kind of use the same deodorants for other hygiene squads. But yeah, you just take 30 scrubs and then multiply that with sprays and body washes and so a lot. If I were to use like one set for each month, then they would probably last that month because back then when I couldn't really afford a whole collection, I would go through stuff like within a month. The deodorant and the body sprays would probably last a little bit longer, but as far as like the scrubs and the body washes, the lotions probably about a month. Because I have such a collection and I rotate, I can have them go a few months, but the oldest products are probably like eight to nine months old and they're already empty. They're in an empties bag. So I'm sorry, I keep looking at the cart. They're probably about the oldest product that's not empty yet. It's probably about six months old, maybe. Anything older than that has already been emptied and they last, they have like a shelf life from like one to three or so years. So Carol, I'm doing just fine. Favorite place travel to? Where would you like to go someday? Favorite place will probably have to be Venice. I think that was the coolest place I've ever seen because it's literally, there's no cars. Like you get to everywhere by walking or through the canals on the boat, and like surrounded by water, seeing all the different like architecture, kind of got that like ruined look to it. It was so beautiful and I loved like just seeing all the different colors, markets, food was absolutely spectacular. Where I would like to go someday, pick like right now, like if 
money didn't matter and we could all go someplace right now, I'd probably pick Bali. Tell us your soccer experience and do you miss playing? So this question actually had the word Olympics in it and I wasn't in the Olympics and I was referring to that story back in another video. I did play for a USA girls team, but it was U18. It wasn't for like the USA Olympics. It was asked if I wanted to play in Europe. So I joined the USA U18 girls soccer team and flew to Europe. There were two guy teams also that traveled with to Europe. I was chosen to be the captain of the girls team. I won a lot of rewards. As a team, we won first place in the Denmark Cup and second place in the Gothia Cup in Sweden. I had the most goals out of all three teams, like including the boys teams, I scored the most goals. We played in Denmark, Sweden, and Czech Republic. It was the greatest experience of my life. To play the sport that I absolutely loved in Europe, representing like my country in a sense, like it was great. We had like a whole ceremony and stuff like they do in the Olympics. It wasn't as grand or as big but there was a huge arena where we had the ceremony and to like talk to other teams from different countries and like learning about them and like trading stuff with people, coolest thing. We went to like clubs and dance. We sight saw a little bit, not too much, um, just because most of our time was spent playing soccer. But when we got to, it was just so cool. And if I could go back and do it again, I would in a heartbeat. I absolutely miss playing. I wish I still had the energy. If you are interested in my reading habits now, probably my favorite genre is fantasy. I really love anything. I'm not big on like historical fiction. I don't really read nonfiction. Hardly ever. It's pretty rare. The fall time during holiday, I will binge read so many thriller, suspense, horror, murder, mystery, love that stuff. I'm really into smut books. I talked about that. Spicy like sex books are always good. There's never a dull moment reading those. I'm gonna get a Kindle. Um, just because I want more smut books, but I don't necessarily want them on my shelf because a lot of the covers are pretty intense and spicy and I don't want those on my shelf. Obviously I have kids. If I didn't have kids, I probably wouldn't care. But because I do, I do want a Kindle so I can buy those books and read them without having an explicit cover on my shelf. What are you reading now and do you have a mini library at home? Okay, so I obviously just told you I was reading this book with my husband. You are not alone. On my own, I am reading Crazy House by James Patterson. Also by myself, reading A Court of Wings and Ruin by Sarah J. Mass. This is the third book of the series. With a group of women, I am reading Neon Gods by Katie Robert. This is spicy. Okay, honey, it is, woo! We love, we love this one. We, <laughs> we love this one. Yes, we do. We're gonna put that down. So I'm reading a lot right now. I normally don't read this much at one time, but because I'm reading some books with other people, I can't read them as much and as fast as I would if I was reading them on my own. Beyond Gods, we can only read a chapter a day and it's killing me. This book, I'm only reading a chapter or two a day with Trevor. These I can read at my own pace, but this one's pretty big. So it's gonna take me a minute to probably get through just with everything else. This is just kind of a different storyline than what I've been reading. So I wanted to get into it just to kind of see, take a break from everything else. because. I know this series has some spice in it. This one's pretty spicy. This one's for mental health. This is just gonna be a break from all of that because it's probably, from what I feel like, is more suspense, whodunit type of book. Favorite movie? Have you watched the Marvel movies? Yes, I love the Marvel movies. I've seen them all probably at least three times, if not more. I liked the comic books growing up, so I love the movies. My favorite movie, I don't have a favorite movie. I would never be able to pinpoint. If I had to pick a favorite genre of movie, it would be horror, thriller type of movies. If you had an unlimited amount of money, what would be the first three things you buy? A limited amount? I'd probably buy land. I probably would start my own business and I would probably invest in either real estate or stocks or something like that. That way, you know, when I die, my kids can have you know, whatever and their kids could have and then their kids and just moving on. We just wanna create a good legacy 
to flow through. So I would probably buy things that would just benefit my family in the long run. What is your dream car? A like beautified Jeep Grand Cherokee or G-Wagon is what I would love. Advice to give my five-year-old self. Wow, there's so much that I would tell myself. But in like a funny but not funny kind of way, I would tell my five-year-old self from here on out, save any money that you get. Just save it. I was not prepared to be an adult. I was not prepared. Nope, I was not prepared at all. Fun fact about me. I don't know if this is a fun fact. I don't know if it's hilarious, but like looking back on it, it's pretty hilarious now. Trevor Kale and I, when he was younger, went to Hawaii specifically um, for a job opportunity for Trevor. So we went there to have his interviews and for us to look at places to live, possibly if we were going to move there. He did end up getting the job offer, but it was, it was not going to work the way that we were hoping they were going to offer it. So we didn't end up moving there, but that's beside the point. We went there for that reason alone, but we also wanted to have like a family vacation. So one day we all went to the beach and y'all, I'm not a very good swimmer. I'm not, and I'm not ashamed of that. I can swim kind of, but like as far as a good swimmer, probably not. And the current, the waves were a little bit stronger that day. And we knew that there was a warning about it. <laughs> Anyway, I'm out there. I am just like in a zone of some sort. I couldn't even tell you. I'm singing a song in my head. I'm pretending I'm a mermaid. Like I am lost in my own underwater world. And I'm just going underneath and in and out of the waves. And I'm just having my best life possible. I am a water person, even though I can't really swim. I love being in the water and I was just so lost out there Got to a point where I wanted to slow down and I kind of put my feet down and realized I could not touch the bottom and I was like oh shit <laughs> and so I, I'm like trying to wade myself a little bit trying to find the bottom because it surely it's not off far and I was like okay I actually can't touch the bottom and I'm drifting further out and I was like what do I do I'm literally freaking out at this point because I'm like, a shark's gonna come and eat me. I'm going to drown. Something bad is going to happen and I am not prepared for death. I'm like trying to discreetly wave Trevor down. I'm acting like everything's okay, but at the same time I'm like, come, come, come help. <laughs> I am like, I'm freaking out, but I'm like, I don't want other people to know that I'm about to die. And so I, he finally understands like what I'm doing, but it's like two seconds after the lifeguard sees that I'm not okay. And so they both start coming out and I'm like, oh shit, I'm like, please hurry I don't think if I go if I go even like five feet that's just where the shark territory is and I know I'm gonna die lifeguard gets to me first I think we should be thankful for that that he didn't get out swam by my husband despite the fact that I would have loved it if my husband saved me <laughs> they both get to me the lifeguard pulls me in and he is pissed that I just was like out frolicking in the ocean like Ariel. It was embarrassing because everybody was staring at me and like our son, <laughs> our son was left on the beach because Trevor was like, your mom's out there drowning. I gotta go save her. <laughs> I can't believe I experienced that. I was like, wow, I really almost drowned in Hawaii. Like I was almost taken out to sea in Hawaii. That is my goal for this channel. My only goal is to inspire others. That's always been my goal. I just want to be somebody that people can relate to and resonate with. I want some I want to be somebody that people feel comfortable with. You know, like I said, inspires others to be the best version of themselves and to love themselves. That's all I've ever wanted and everything else is just kind of a bonus. Songs to listen to. I really love all sorts of music. I don't really listen to country like at all. There's probably like five songs that I maybe like. But as far as like other music goes, I love to listen to it all depending on my mood and my vibe and like 
what the occasion is. Body spray recommendations for someone who likes sweet smells. Um, I would say raspberry tangerine would be a great one. Sunshine guavatini or Fiji guavatini or something like that from Bath and Body Works. The grapefruit frosé from Bath and Body Works is probably my favorite smelling fruit spray. It's so nice and it's very potent so I really recommend that one. Opinions on face wash. So I don't really use face wash. I use the Dr. Bronner's Baby Unscented Soap to wash my face. I will say I do like the CeraVe Foaming Face Wash. That's another good one I feel like for someone who has sensitive skin. Never straighten your hair. I did recently. It wasn't like really straightened but it was straight enough because I had that wig and then maybe yanked my wig off and so I just kind of like combed through my hair. I'll probably get it like actually straightened again probably in a few months just because I'm tired of dealing with my curls. It's a lot of work but as far as like really straightening my hair I haven't done that in years. Favorite natural hair care line. So I love Miss Jessie's and currently I'm using an absolutely loving Camille Rose. Even though I've been natural for years now, I am still trying to grasp and understand my hair. Like a lot of trial and error, I feel like it's a lot of learning, especially if you haven't been natural your entire life, which I haven't been. I mean, it's been probably like seven years probably since I've been natural. Remember when I first kind of started not getting my hair chemically straightened anymore? and Trevor telling me that he absolutely loved my curls. And I was so taken aback by that because in that time, I, I feel like it's more widely accepted now, but during that time and way before that, before I met him, my hair was not really accepted or appreciated or loved or anything like that. It was seen very negatively. So hearing him say that he loves my curls and they were nothing like they are right now because they weren't used to being in that state, I was like, Wow, I really love you. Will you do a hair care routine? Yes, eventually. Like I just said, I'm not really confident in my hair care routine. And I know someone's gonna have something negative to say. And like, I don't need any negative comments about my hair care routine because I'm still trying to learn. But also wash day just really stresses me out because it takes so long to get through my hair. I don't wanna be stressed and annoyed when I'm doing the video for you guys. So when I feel more confident in my hair care routine and when I'm not so stressed at doing it, I promise I will get a hair care routine out. Favorite and least favorite thing about being a military spouse. I would say my favorite thing is being able to see the world, travel, learn different cultures, learn different languages, having my kids grow up in that. Not very many Americans that can say that they grew up in Japan. Knowing that we're gonna be there and that my kids get to experience that, oh, so exciting to me. Least favorite thing is when I just need my husband, I can't just go into the next room to be with him. I can't just hug him, I can't just kiss him, I can't just whatever. It can't be a shoulder for me to cry on or to lean on when I'm struggling because he's not here physically. I mean, he can via text or phone call or whatever, but he's not physically here and that sucks. Most incredible moment during pregnancy. During pregnancy? I don't know because like I said, I had really difficult pregnancies. I enjoyed feeling my babies. Like the only indication to me that they were okay was them moving. So that always made me happy. But like I was sick, I was in pain. <laughs> I'm being honest and this probably is gonna sound so terrible, but if I'm being honest, like having Trevor bring me whatever I wanted to eat or drink, regardless of the time, 3 a.m. or 12 p.m., like regardless of the time, he would go out and get it for me. And I would just indulge and be happy and fat and pregnant and I nothing mattered in that moment the, the fact that my husband loved me enough to go get me what I wanted and didn't ask no questions. I will say though, for Kale specifically, I think, I love this for Navy too, but specifically for Kale, it meant I think more to me at the time because I was 19, I was broke, I didn't really have a good paying job, I had no idea what I was going to do. But decorating his nursery. It's a really big moment for me because a lot of people were giving me stuff and I say I say me because Trevor and I technically weren't together anymore when I was pregnant. So 
if I say something that makes it seem like it's just focusing about me, it's because even though we were having a kid and we had been in a relationship, technically at that point, we were no longer dating. We were just still, mm -mm. my mom was like, you need to get your own place. You're having a kid, you know, you gotta grow up, be a mom, you got work, you can do this. I believe in you. If you really absolutely need to come home, you can, but I want you to do this. And I was really mad at her, but in the end, I am so thankful that she like kicked me out of the house and was like, do this, you can do this. So I got an apartment, a two bedroom apartment. It wasn't in the nicest neighborhood, but it was a two bedroom apartment and it was ours and I was paying for it on my own with my two jobs. I worked seven days a week and the one thing that I wanted to do, because so many people were being so kind and giving me stuff for the baby and like all this other stuff, I said, the one thing I wanna do is just, I'm gonna start crying again. The one thing I wanted to do was pay for his nursery. Golly, I didn't think I would cry at this answer at all. I blame my mom for being a crier. I mean, obviously I have other things going on in my life, but I blame my mom. I think it's hereditary because she cries at everything wanted to pay to decorate his nursery and it wasn't much but did it and I decorated it and it was our home huh. I've said this a lot in the past like if you follow me on social media this sort of stuff but Kale literally saved my life. I was in probably the darkest place in my life. And when I found out I was pregnant with him, I wanted to be better as a person. I wanted to be the best mom I could be. I wanted to turn over a new leaf right then and there. And I swore to myself that I was gonna be the best damn mom despite anything I had gone through before then. And so getting us our own place and decorating his room from my money that I worked so hard for. <sighs> Golly, was probably my happiest moment in that pregnancy. And I'm very grateful that Trevor and I, you know, we found our way back to each other and we were in a better place um, as a couple financially to be able to provide probably at a better standing for Navy because we were 19 when I got pregnant, you know, so knowing that this was ours and that I did that was probably my favorite part. That is it for this Q&A video, you guys. I'm sorry I cried. I cannot believe I cried. I really try so hard. That is it for this q and I've been in here for a while. The kids are starting to get angsty, so I'm gonna go. I hope you all have a great weekend ahead of you, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye, guys.